Welcome back to another episode of Dishing the Dirt with Garage 16. I'm your host Aaron. And I'm your other host Vince. And what better time to put together another exhilarating show than in the height of summer in the midst of the speedway season. We're about to thrust you into another show full of petrol powered exertion and antics. Firstly we'll be bringing you the spectacle that was the Garage 16 South Island Modified Champs throughout the episode. Next up is the latest Speedway news from New Zealand and around the world, not to mention a breakdown of the plethora of national championships that have been held recently. We do what we do best and go behind the scenes, this time in the referee's box during a meeting to see how all the protests are handled. There's more driver profiles that show you deep into the private lives of some of the country's best races and we also have highlights of the Wellington Super Saloon Championships. Then there's highlights from the Garage 16 Wellington Modified Champs, not to mention a bit of fun had by the two of us. I think that'll do for now, let's get into it. One of the biggest events on the calendar for the Modified class went down recently at Koken Woodford Glen and we couldn't have been prouder to have been the naming rights sponsor for it, the Gara 16 South Island Modified Championships. With the New Zealand Champs being held there later this year, it was a dress rehearsal for what is going to be one of the greatest events in Speedway this year. Now the who's who of modified racing showed up to compete. We're talking the current 1NZ Brad Lane, the 3NZ and former New Zealand champion Luke Brown, Jamie Foxx who's won the national champs more than I can remember, plus a consortium of local Christchurch drivers including the winner of last season's modified super series Mike Goulet, up and coming protege Jacob Mitchell who's simply freakishly fast and local hero Dan Ray. That's right, and there was even a surprise entry that the crowd was simply crazy about the legendary Hayden Mackay driving Jason Scott's 88T Modified. Now, in December, Koken Woodford Glen played host to the Gara 16 Canterbury Modified Champs that saw 3NZ Luke Brown take the top of the podium despite only ever having been to the track on two previous occasions. 4C Mike Goulet came in a close second. Now, with just a month having gone by since then, Luke and Mike are bound to be two of the favourites and are definitely worth keeping an eye on. OK, now we're going to bring you the first heat of the night. The format for the evening consisted of three groups called Garage 16, Value Cars and Koken. Each group would race the other two across the three heats. This would determine the grid draw for the winner takes all feature final. So sit back and try to relax as things are about to get wild. And it was a bit different the track was to about a month ago when you did the Canterbury Champs. And um, but you seemed to get the hang of it pretty much straight away. But the others were slipping. So what was your secret out there? Uh, I guess I like a drivey track. You know, where you can really get on the throttle and and, and go fast. But it is difficult because if you get the car too tight, then you end up pushing and and you end up you know quite hard to get around the track. So I set the thing up quite free, and, and it seemed to work.
a completely different track this time. Um, apparently they've laid a bit of a new surface, so uh, it was quite drivey. Um, I tried to persist with a high line to pass uh, Hayden Corbett there, and it was a bit tight. Uh, I kept washing up out of the exit of uh, the corners, so couldn't really make that stick. And then uh, once we got past Hayden, uh, who was running really well, um, yeah, we kind of set it into a groove, and the track was pretty good, so real happy. Brad Lane, one NZ, first in the first heat of the South Island Modified Champs. We're not talking by a little bit either, mate. You were, you were like, I don't even know how far that was, but it was awesome. What, what's up with your car tonight? What's up with you? Uh, yeah, so we've um, had a few uh, changes with the car while it's been down here since we ran last. Um, we're going to be say a big thanks to uh, Jake from uh, Raceworks um, South Island. He's put a new rack in the rear of the car and the thing just seems to be on rails now, man. It's awesome. Sweet, man. Are you making any changes between now and the next race or is this sort of perfect? Uh, yeah, so we got 12 or 11 races to our next race, so we'll watch this next modified race and then just sort of uh, make changes accordingly because I say the track will go away quite a bit. Sweet, I see you are, you're going sideways pretty soon on those corners there. That's um, that, that was a bit of fun. I actually, I saw you on, on two wheels to set the start as well. But that, that must have been a bit of fun. Uh, yeah. Do you even remember that? Uh, <laughs> Common occurrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has been, well, yeah, it's a perfect start to the night and um, we might be looking at the next South Island Champs, so you never know, but perfect start to the graduation into the New Zealand Champs, which is in a month's time, so we want to hold on to that one Z, right? Yeah, hopefully they don't jinx it too soon, but yeah, hopefully the old girl starts humming along now and we can um, start making some passes and get some places. Sweet ass, well I won't jinx it for you by saying you'll definitely get it, but good luck for the rest of tonight, mate, and uh, we'll talk to you again, no doubt. Cheers, Vince. Thanks, mate. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Luke Brown, 3NZ, South Island Modified Champs, first heat, you started in fourth, finished second, you won the Canterbury Champs less than a month ago, it looks like we're getting a bit of a pattern here mate, what, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah hey, if we keep finishing up the front I'm bloody stoked. Well, yeah I noticed you were a bit um, sloppy on a few of those first corners but you pulled in tight so I'm guessing that nice, you, you sorted out the track now right, you know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it looked like it may go a little bit slick down low, as you would expect, but there was a bit of bite up top, so we may see a bit of uh, two-lane two racing later on in the evening. So um, we'll just keep chipping away. Um, we started fourth, went second, so we're moving forward, cars in one piece, so yeah, happy. Sweet, I see um, you got um, the pit crew master uh, working on there. Can you tell us what's um, happening with the car, what's being changed? Yeah, so uh, we've got Dad, Mark and Tashi tonight. Um, so I'll just watch the next race, um, well, probably in the next race, so just watch the other classes, just have a look to see if we need to tighten it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I might, I might tighten it up just a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was good to get a bit of a shake then out of the way and now we can kind of crack on. Awesome, mate. Well, good luck for the rest of the night. Mike, you're not the champion, should have under your belt. I won't say good luck because that'll be biased, but you know, let's, let's see what happens, eh? Uh, like I said last time, you know, I'm, my, my aim is to prepare for the New Zealand champ. So um, as long as we learn some things and, uh, you know, go forward, I'm, I'm pretty happy regardless of the results. So, hey, podium would be nice, not going to say no, but uh, yeah, as long as we go forward and learn some things, I'll be pretty happy. Well, excellent start tonight. Good luck for the rest. Cool. Cheers, mate. Thanks. 22 seat, Hayden Corbett. You finished third in that one, mate. You started on second grid, but you had an awesome fight there with Luke Brown. Tell us a bit about how it was for you. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it was pretty awesome, mate. Eh? I always love having a battle with another car. Um, I could see him in turn three come around the outside of me, but I sort of watched him wash out a bit wide, and I hugged the bottom line. My car gets off the bottom line pretty good, so we managed to get past him, and he watched that for about four or five uh, laps there, and no, it was just awesome having some good battles out there, and then uh, the one NZ um, come around the outside of us and uh, a couple of times, and yeah, managed to make the pass stick, but um, yeah, it was all good, pretty happy. Yeah, no, nah, excellent battles there, it was great to watch. I had to find the track because uh, I noticed Luke was going a bit wide there and you held him off for quite a while and a few of the other people were, uh, weren't were quite up to part of the track because it's a very different track to the Canterbury Champs. Um, tell us a bit about the track. Yeah, definitely a lot different. Um, sort of a bit like last week, it was really drivey for the first four or five laps then the black started to come through on the bottom line and started getting quite slick. So we sort of got two tracks out there, the high line's quite drivey, um, the low line's starting to get slick. So just whatever one you want to set your car up for now I guess. Sweet ass. And um, a couple of North Island boys were in one and two there, so uh, we're going to have to sort that out, right? Oh, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> we got a few more races left yet to sort them out. <laughs> Sweet, mate. Well, all the best for the rest of the night, and I look forward to seeing what you can do. Thanks, 
Now, while we were there, Vince and I got into a bit of an argument, as we often do, about who would actually be faster in a modified race. He didn't seem to realise that it had obviously been me. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, we decided to settle it once and for all, so we set up a two-lap runoff between us. All we had to do was get our hands on a couple of cars to use. Hey, listen, mate, I've been having a chat to Vince, and we want to have a race, because I reckon it'll be heaps faster than that loser. How about you lend me the 1NZ, dude? Easy, Tiger. That's a uh, bit of a beast for you to handle. Oh, I think I'm going to have to say no to that one. All right, fair enough, brother. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Steve, mate. Hey, how you going? Hey, look, you know, Vince, he reckons he'd be faster in a mod than me, so we're going to have a bit of a race, and I reckon you should lend me the 82C, mate. What do you reckon? <laughs> no, no, when health freezes over, man. Oh. Ralph. Ralph, mate, do you mind, um, I've got to go out and race Aaron, right? Because he reckons he's pretty hot, but, um, I need, to, I need a car in, uh, 99C. That's where it's our car, Borrow. Uh, I might, but I think you've got another one. Not you've got it, mate. What? No one's driving it. No, you are. Like, really? Oh, I don't, I don't want to drive your car anyway, mate. Take it, take it off. Take it, mate. Oh, I, um, I, I need your car, because I've got to have a quick race against Aaron, because he's he thinks he's awesome, but it's all good if I take out your car, eh? I mean, it's it's doing pretty well this season, so I just want the best, you know? It's all right, eh? Nah, probably not. Oh, my car, sorry. What's <laughs> No, just like, for like a couple laps. Nah, just a couple laps. But like, I mean, I drive a Mitsubishi car, so I think I can handle this. Oh, I don't think you would be able to handle this. No, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not hard. Oh, sorry. Actually, no, we did a block. I thought you were different, mate. I thought, I thought you were different, but I'm taking that with me. Fair enough. Jamie, you're having a race. Guys, yeah. guys, glad to support you, guys. Are we able to borrow your cars? Yeah, because we've been having a discussion, and I reckon I'd be faster in a race than him. I know we're just TV guys. He's, he's too heavy, so I'll win. Yeah, I'm so sure we'll we, sort you out. Yeah. Well, you will? We've got yeah. We've got just the ride. <laughs> okay, see right. you soon. <laughs> So yeah, it turns out Vince is a massive cheat and so is his accomplice from the 3NZ Luke Brown's team. Greg, who was pushing you. Well, yeah, you know what they say, rubbing is racing, and Greg was simply rubbing we, which made me finish first. Not to mention we couldn't get anyone to lend us their cars. I don't think they trusted you, to be honest, and they would have been fine if it was me, mate. Yeah, sure, sure. Just a sore loser, I reckon. Anyway, what should we do with those trucks now that we have them? You're obviously too heavy to use them frequently. Look who's talking, mate. But I was thinking we could give them away to a couple of kids at the Garage 16 New Zealand Modified Champs at Coke and Woodford Glen on the 19th and 20th of February. What do you reckon? I reckon that's an awesome idea. So stay tuned and we'll let you know how you can win those a bit later on. Sounds great, but you know what it's time for? The news.
I'm Jeannie Adrian, and I'm bringing you this edition of the Dishing the Dirt News. After some disastrous weather, Paradise Valley Speedway was finally able to hold their TWS Superstock Championship. Despite having lost a few races due to the event being postponed multiple times, there were still an incredible 132 cars there to compete. After 18 Superstock races in a row, the top four from each race were put through to the qualifiers. Those races were then split into six different groups. Red, blue, green, yellow, orange and white, all of which competed in three heats to find the top four from each group. Kicking off the night was the red group, who saw a few pile-ups resulting in number 38M Ross Ashby suffering a loose wheel guard, which ultimately took him out of the race. The red group qualifiers were 19M Kerry Remnant, 89W Dale Robertson, 66R Steve Hampton and 591P Wayne Hemi. The blue group fought hard to make the cut, but ultimately the drivers who made it through were 46B Quinn Ryan, 88P Jack Myers, 5G Josh Prentice and 54S Paul Johnson. The green group had some fairly tame races as well as a few gaps in the grid on their final heat, leaving the cards wide open. This resulted in 10G Peter Reed snatching up his qualifier's spot, as well as 106H Des Curry, 41B Jason Long and 48N Brett Nichols. The yellow group made for some exciting racing. 98B Quinton Butcher had a huge rollover in turn 3 of Heat 2 after hitting the wall. After three heats, the qualifying races were 94P William Humphreys, 71P Shane Malsop, 81R Damien Orr and 72A Cody McKee. The orange group saw 126K Asher Rees shine as he took first place in both Heat 2 and 3, qualifying him as well as 72P Simon Joblin, 58P Peter Bingston and 82S Hamish Booker. The sixth and final group was the white group, which featured the 1NZ Randall Tarrant. Things got a little toasty in Heat 1 for 15A Carl Pegg as a fire erupted underneath his car, forcing him to leave the track. The final races to qualify were 1NZ Randall Tarrant, 127G Ethan Rees, 26K Mitch Vickery and 5W Keegan Levine. With the qualifiers done and dusted, the top 26 drivers got to go through to the championship. Due to a stray tyre on the track in Heat 2, 81R Damien Orr got himself into a rolling crash. Luckily he made it out okay. Thanks to Blake Speedway for that footage. The once 126K Asher Rees fought hard and has now gained the title of 1NZ as he took first place, followed by 41B Jason Long in second and 26K Mitch Vickery in third. Unfortunately, Randall Tarrant lost his 1NZ title as he fell into fourth place overall. Perhaps he can snatch it back off Asher Rees in 2022. Here is a story from Aaron on his hometown track, Gisborne Speedway, as they celebrate their 50th anniversary. Check it out. We all have a hometown, and for some of us, our hometown has a speedway. My hometown is Gisborne, and in 2021, it's the 50th anniversary of the Gisborne Speedway. The speedway opened in 1972 to a crowd of 12,000 just a bit before my time, with my first visit being somewhere around about 1979. I used to get suited up in my blue overalls with the shell decals, which would need to be prized off me in the preceding days as I pretended to be a speedway hero on my plastic chips motorbike or stretched over my dad's real motorbike in the garage. The track has seen many speedway heroes over the years from Ivan Major, Ronnie Moore, Ollie Olsen through to Four Wheel Internationals like Barry Butterworth or Tony Jackson and of course Kiwi Grown racers like Graham Pedal in his V8 Anglia Lily the Pink numbered 0G. I like many had my own hero and his name is Kenny Divin.
I believe he may even still be peddling to this day. Watching the 21G take on the likes of Doug Walsh, if my memory serves me correctly, was the highlight of any weekend. He would cruise on into the track in his panel van with race car in tow, drive it hard on the track and be the life of the party off it. I did not know Kenny personally and still don't, but for me he was the one that I would cheer on the hardest. This track with a view of young Nick's head by the beach has the history to reminisce the good times and celebrate the future with today's superstars like Ethan Cook and the Rees race team. And just ask Dave Gooch when enough is enough. As the establishment spin laps with the next generation and any in between, as a fan it will always be home. I stopped in recently outside of an event day and only got to the front gate on a rare gloomy Gisborne day. But I personally wish Gisborne Speedway all the best for their 50th year as the dust shines through the rays of the first city to see the sun. Western Springs Speedway held their 50 lap Midgets Classic on January 4th, again after having been postponed due to rain. This event brought Graham Standring out of retirement and back on the track for the first time in five years. Although Standring stated he was nervous, it didn't show in his racing. The night was taken out by 1NZ Michael Pickens, followed by 27M Hayden Williams and 10A Brad Mosin. Standring stated in an interview that he didn't think he'd be asked back, but if he does get asked, he would be prepared to do it. Prestige Pools Waikaraka Family Speedway held the 2021 Hyperdrive New Zealand Super Saloon Championship this past week, and what an event it was. Held over two action-packed nights, we got to see the best of the class fight it out for the top. They had the drivers split into six teams, A to F, who then paired up and competed over 15 heats in five rounds. Round one was led by 8H Craig Cardwell, followed by 21N Ian Burson and 58C Richie Taylor. Round two's winner was 17M Pete Dixon, followed by 23P Mick Quinn and 124M Dan Corrin. The overall first place spot of the event went to the now 1NZ Pete Dixon, followed by 2NZ Chris Cowling and 3NZ Craig Cardwell. The 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Midgets Nationals kicked off this week at the Tulsa Expo Raceway. They have some big names competing this year, some of which include former three-time winner Christopher Bell, Cup Series champion Chase Elliott, as well as Kyle Larson, Rico Abreu, David Gravel and Brad Sweet, just to name a few. This has to be the biggest racing event in America. Come check us out next week with our report on the event. And that concludes our news. I'm Jenny Adrienne and the dirt has been dished. Thanks Jeannie, that was awesome as always. Sure was. Now, one thing we like to do is go behind the scenes and find out more about Speedway, whether it's finding out about drivers and their lives or how a track operates, all the systems and processes that happen behind closed doors. That kind of stuff is incredibly interesting. Yeah, and while we were at the South Island Modified Champs, we arranged to sit up in the referees box during the racing to see how they operate. And while we were up there, we got the chance to see how a penalty is decided on and how it's dealt with, including dealing with the driver in question. So we've brought you some footage of one of the incidents, and it's something that very few people get to see, as this is usually off limits to all except the referees and the drivers. Enjoy. <laughs> No, for the New Zealand Yeah, so it's the same referee tonight, 
what all the, the New Zealand are. <coughs> so if you don't get on well tonight, shit. <laughs> 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 I um, Phil also will be on the race receiver too. So I think we've got a great opportunity here tonight um, to learn each other, um, especially you guys with me. I'm very consistent, I'm about the consistency, okay? So what you get on the first corner of the first lap of the first race is exactly what you get on the last corner of the last lap of the last race, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through some, some of the rules that we're gonna be running tonight. It's gonna, I'm gonna read it out today, it's gonna take a little while, okay? So have a listen up and uh, you've got your questions all bring it up later. This is, a, this is a big one guys, pole line, all right? Every point is important for this reason, you do not want to be relegated or excluded for passing over the pole line. The maximum penalty will always be two positions.
Okay, so I've got Bill Clarkson, the head referee for Speedway New Zealand here. We were just looking at that um, incident there with um, with Mike Gourlay coming in potentially a little bit too hot into the corner. Obviously, he has his opinion, you have yours. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that incident? Yeah, so um, he's been relegated two spots for passing over the pole line. Um, one of the spotters out there saw him do it. They've written it down uh, on what, what corner, what lap it was. Um, so we've brought Michael in. We've um, asked for Michael's explanation. He gave us an explanation. Um, but uh, the, the penalty still stands. But what we do do with all the drivers is we let them know that they have a right of protest because it's, a, it's an open, transparent, democratic process. Um, so I fully explained to Michael what his process, uh, what his rights were and what he could do, but he's elected to um, take the fine on the chin and move on. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously if they if they have an infringement, they, you obviously go through the process, you talk, talk through the whole process, and then at the end, if they still don't agree with your decision, they can then move on from there and pay a fee, don't they, to, to make a protest, so that stops everyone from just continually pros, um, protesting, right? Yeah, that's right. So in a, in a championship, um, uh, it's a $250 protest fee, and a normal night it's $150. Um, we have what's called a protest committee, uh, and the referees are not involved in that. So we have the steward, the clerk of the course, and the driver's rep. Um, so they're the protest committee, uh, they're neutral. Um, the referee will be called in to give evidence and the, any evidence that the driver may have. And then the re protest committee get together and they decide whether or not the, re uh, the protest stands or won or lost. Um, and then obviously if the driver wins, they get their money back and they don't get the relegation or penalty. Mm. Absolutely, so fairly, fairly tight system. You get an opportunity to state your case. If you're not happy with that, you get another opportunity. And then at the end of the day, I guess we've got to get on with the night, right? Well, they've, got a, they've actually got a third one after they can go to an appeal process through the board. Um, but I mean, it has to be pretty bad to get to that yeah. level. Absolutely. No, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Cheers, mate. Mike, it's happened again. I come and interview and then you get dragged off. I think I might have to send Vince out to interview you from now on. Yeah, as long as he's upstairs with me, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, so obviously, uh, we just had a bit of a talk to Bill there. He said that um, obviously, you guys crossed the you crossed the pole line a little bit. Um, what's your what's your thoughts on things? Well, I probably did car pass the on the pole. Maybe I don't know. Um, it is what it is. I got relegated two spots. Um, hey, it's not over yet. And um, one of his spotters said that I did it. So. You know, I have watched video footage before and found that I haven't at that stage, but hey, I run pretty hard on the pole. If I went over, I went over. I'm not bothered about it. Yeah. And the, um, and the actual process itself, it's quite well organised from our point of view. Obviously you get called up there and things get explained and you get the opportunity to have a go or make a further protest and things like that. So those, those things are in place. But in this, in this occasion you decided not to, not to go down the, um, go further with an, a, um, a paid protest. No, I mean I'd hold, up, hold it up for an hour and a half. There's no point. I mean we're all here to race and you know, we'll get out on the track, the whole 20 of us possibly, and uh, we'll see who wins it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the 4C, obviously, a slow start to the night with the engine issues, and um, and this has happened, but, um, mate, I know I know you, you'll get out in the feature and you'll give it, give it absolute death, so um, all the best for that. Uh, thank you, guys. Cheers, mate. Well Vince, it was absolutely awesome to get the opportunity to go up into the ref, ref spots. A big thanks to Bill Clarkson for letting us do it. A big thanks to Mike Gawley for letting us film his incident. And um, yeah, we hope you guys out in the audience there enjoyed seeing what is not normally seen by many people. Yeah, it was fascinating to see what goes on up there. But for now, it's time to find out a bit more about the driver we saw in that clip before watching the race where the incident took place in the second heat of the Garage 16 South Island Modified Championship. Championship. How are you, all right? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Gawley, 4C Modified. We race out of Christchurch. Um, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. This is where I live. Um, this is my workshop. My daughter's car's there. My four cylinders over there. And this is the car I'm running tonight in the Canary Champs.
The, um, the car I've got here is a Raceworks, um, and yeah, no, they, they go pretty good. They are uh, no, excellent. Um, well, I'm a full-time landlord, but I do all my own renovations and that, and um, that's basically what I do for a living. Um, it's taken me a long time to, to actually enjoy doing it, and I love doing it now. Well, to Tommy's been with me for probably 20 years now, and he's brilliant, and in the last two seasons we've got Mark Nickel on board, and he's just brilliant. Like, Tommy and him just mesh. They're really good together, so I'm quite happy with that. And to be quite honest, I've got my, my daughter Cassandra racing now. 11C, how was the first race for you guys? Yeah, no, it was good actually. I'm um, getting back and in, getting into it. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fast track. We're just working our way up there. And she hasn't been behind the wheel of a race car for quite a, probably 10 years. And um, I'm hoping by the end of the season we'll get her basically sort of mid-pack up. And I think that's quite achievable. Um, she's got a good car, good motor, and uh, yep, just laps. Everyone, when you look down that aisle, everyone you can have a conversation with or a beer after the meeting, um, they're all good. Um, there may be maybe one or two that, you know, they're very competitive, so, yeah, no, it, they're, they're all good guys. They're all, you know, they're out there to compete, have fun, but mainly compete, so that's good. So it just makes our racing that little bit more up on the level where, you know, many years ago the North Islanders would come to town and because we had no one good here or not very good gear, these guys would just smoke us. So as this class has built over the last 15 years in Christchurch, um, we've just got faster. We've had to, to get to the pointy end of the field and it just makes good racing, good for the crowd. It's, it's hard and fast. It's hard to say, it's a real technical track. You know, once you suss out turn three and four, you're away. Um, everyone's got good gear. We've got guys that have got numbers and repeating numbers. Um, we've got, you know, um, Brad Lane's gonna be hard to beat. Um, but yeah, no, it's gonna be good. It, it, it could be anyone's. It's luck on the day, but the good thing about this title is, is I believe we're doing um, five heats and then a final winner take all. Now they are the best ones for the crowd. So if you crash and you're out of points, if you make it into the final and if you're off grid 20, you've got a chance to win that. Where we competed in Wellington last year for the title, um, we had a bit of a rough run in the first race, but the second race we didn't compete. So we were completely out because it was over three heats. If it was all on the last, even if I was at grid 20, you had a chance to prove yourself. And that's what's good about winner take all on the last. Oh, jeez, <laughs> I'd have to think about that. Well, to be quite, to be quite honest, my dad and I, which is Roy, we, we've got Gawley's properties and you know, we pay the bills on the car and that, that that's our sponsorship. I've never ventured out for a sponsorship. I mean, my dad one year, um, how would I put it, he organised for the casino to sponsor me, which is a pretty good sponsorship, but I turned it down because I sort of like to do my own thing. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, they are. They, they love it. You know, they all come down after the... Um, the meeting and have a look around the cars and they ask you 90 questions and if I ever see a young kid with his dad or young girl I always say hop in the car you know they're more more than welcome to because I mean it's sort of how would I put it it gets them encouraging encouraged into what we do and when they hop in the car and that you know I've had kids go 
wow dad this has got a lot of room in this car and you know they've got grins and their parents take photos nah it's all good it's a sport for everyone i mean you know some people you you explain you know oh, i race speedway oh you race stock cars well yes we have stock cars but our cars are totally different they're totally different to a stock car um the, it, it's quite surprising though it, it is speedway through new zealand is actually growing and you start talking to people and you know i could talk to someone in auckland who's an accountant that no, never been to Speedway and he said oh I've watched you online on YouTube you know it's amazing how you know the internet has opened the world up to Speedway definitely you need to go out to Speedway and have a look because it's an eye opener because I mean I know of people that have never been and they're hooked And I'm Vince. And we're at the South Island Modified Champs. <laughs> Hayden McKay, 
driving the 88T tonight, you're back to um, back to have, a, have another bit of a crack, just having a bit of a spin and having a bit of fun? Or? Yeah, um, got a phone call from uh, Gavin Hill yesterday actually, um, in the afternoon and said, oh, what's your thoughts on doing this? Well, what are you doing tomorrow night? And I was meant to be in the corporate box. And uh, yeah, Jace, um, who owns the car, Jason Scott from the Edge, he was too busy and uh, they'd done some work on it. And um, so yeah, I'm just here really doing some some R&D for him and make sure it doesn't jump out of gear like it did the other week for him and um, yeah just do some laps have some fun. Yeah so back five minutes got out there in the front stayed there had a bit of a challenge from Mike at the end but um, but managed to hold it and take the win. Yeah it's um, it's a good start uh, you want to be able to do that when you start off the front so we're just 100% here to just turn laps and give Jason some feedback um, obviously he's done a lot of laps in sprint car and as similar as they are, they're not a sprint car. So if I can help him a little bit, then uh, that'll be cool. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to just do some laps, low pressure, no pressure, and um, get back in one after uh, after my issues. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the big crash last year and stuff. But yeah, getting back into a mod might, must be good, and I know the fans will be happy to see you back out there, out there doing it, doing it again. But super saloon, um, super saloon season is still going for you as well too. So have you got anything big coming up for that? Yeah, well, uh, the New Zealand champs are at Waikaraka tonight. Um, good luck with Christchurch guys. But it just we had a really, really bad start to our season, just a lot of bad luck and weird things going on, and um, it didn't make sense to go north. So. Um, yeah, we're planning to do as much as we can uh, for the rest of the season in the Super. I, I only have Super Saloon goals this year, so um, want to put on a good a good show and have a good nudge at a South Island title in Dunedin um, and try our best to be part of the Megan Turbo Series. So. Awesome. Well, I know the fans are happy to see you no matter what you're driving, so um, all the best for the rest of the evening. Thank cool. You. Thank you for what you guys are doing. Cheers, good. mate. Thanks. Mike, no drive in the first race, but uh, not too bad in the second one, mate. Yeah, no, that one was pretty good. Uh, first race, we only had three pound fuel pressure, yeah. and it just wasn't making any power. Quite frustrating, but yeah, no, that one was better. Yeah. Yep. Got to the bottom of the issue and uh, got it sorted, and uh, once you went, how's the track out there? Seems quite drivey, has it? Uh, yeah, it's slick in places and drivey in other places. Um, it's pretty average, the track. It's good. So, um, so yeah, hopefully that, um, that that position gives you a decent position for the um, for the feature tonight. Well, I'm probably in the middle, but it's 25 laps. Magic, mate. All the best for the rest. Thank you very much, guys. Jamie Fox, solid start to the night, coming in, coming in third in that one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, just trying to get my head around it all. You know, it's been a few years since we've been here, but um, no, the track looks all right. Obviously, it's a bit different to the North Island tracks, you know. So. Yeah, it's good to get one under your belt, I suppose, and uh, we'll work on it from here. Magic, that, that's definitely, definitely right. Because how many New Zealand titles do you have, Jamie? Uh, four. Four, so four New Zealand titles. It'd be good to come down here. Obviously, you're competing for the South Island champs, but obviously the big one on the 19th and 20th of February, you're going to come back and have a pretty good crack at that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's what this is all about. Um, throughout my career, obviously 30-plus years of racing, we've never been able to, to um, run a South Island champ, so this is... Uh, probably the last thing I need to do, you know, from a bucket list. So yeah, no, it's cool to be here and um, awesome to catch up with everyone. Magic, no, that's all, all good. And um, you've got one more heat to go tonight before the feature for your car, eh? Do you know where you're starting off on the next race? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's a bit further back, but um, I'm not 100% sure I've got to suss that out. Awesome, mate. All the best for the rest. Cheers. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. So there we have it. Mike Goulet crossed the line in second place, but was relegated to fourth. Okay, moving on now, we have the highlights from another high-powered class, Super Saloons in the Wellington Super Saloon Championship.
from one thundering class to another, let's head back to Cokenwood for Glen for the third and final heat of the Garage 16 South Island Modified Champs.
All right, we are here with 24C Dan Ray, mate. The second heat, you won it. How did it feel? Yeah, there's a few cautions. I was just waiting for it to end, really, so it was good, yeah. Yep, no, you, that's right. There were a few cautions there, but you managed to hold uh, Jacob off there. Um, any any moment there when you were a bit worried? No, nah, the top's pretty good, so I knew if I rode it around there pretty good, it'd, yeah, he'd have to go to the bottom to get me, and there's not much down there, so. No, excellent, mate. And you got, um, you've been on pretty good form lately. And um, so, South Island Modifieds, this might be your night. What are you thinking? Oh, yeah, well, you always hope so, eh? So, we'll just have to wait and see. Sweet. Any secrets that um, you're tinkering with your car? Any any stuff you want to tell us? Nah, just fake it till you make it, mate. It's... Sweet, mate. Well, um, hopefully, your form continues for this um, for the final race tonight. And um, South Island champ, I think. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Should be good. Cheers. Right, cheers, mate. Oh, as I was saying, Jacob, 18C, you're beautiful, mate. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. No, that was, uh, that was that's, that's unrelated, guys. Um, let's start that again. 18C, Jacob, mate, I told you I'd be talking to you again. You were second in that race. How'd it feel? Ah, uh, yeah, good. The track's pretty slicked off now. It's only up high, well, so it's probably a bit of a one-lane thing. But hopefully, it comes back. Yeah, yeah no, I'm sure it will, mate. And uh, you were battling pretty hard with Dan Ray throughout that whole race there. Couldn't quite get him though. Nah, he had, I had nothing for him. I couldn't, couldn't pass him anywhere. Stuck just behind him up high. But yeah, we'll see what we can do for this. See where we are for this main event. Yep, now you'll have to pip him in the next one. Show him how it's done. But now you had a pretty excellent race. How's your car feeling? Making any changes for the um, for the next race? Uh, yeah, we'll probably tighten it up a little bit more for the slick. But yeah, the car's feeling good actually. It's a bit bouncy, but that's just how I drive it really. Um, yeah. Sweet, now you had some uh, good results tonight, so hopefully you get a good start for the final and you might be the South Island champ. Oh, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? I haven't won a heat yet, so if I win the title, it would be pretty good. Um, I'd just like to thank all my sponsors and my crew for everything that I've done for the whole season. It's been real cool. Sweet, mate. Who's the, who's the main person in your crew there? You got some family or something like that? Um, Dad, he does all the hours in the shop, uh, in, the, in the garage. Um, yeah, I couldn't do it without him. He does more than I do. I sort of just sit and watch. Perfect, mate. Well, that's all good. Keep going for the rest of the night and um, hope it all goes well. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, mate. Good luck. 69C, Andrew Naven, third in that heat. How do you feel about that one? Uh, bloody good. So, all season we've been playing with the car, trying to get it better, better, better. Tonight, so far, so good. Yeah, mate, you look like you're on form tonight and it's not a better time to be on form with New Zealand champs coming up. What's your hopes for the New Zealand champs? Wait and see, eh? Wednesday? Yeah, not going to jinx nothing. No, no, that's fair enough, mate. Get through the South Island champs. You might. Um, so this is your home track. It, it shows, mate. You got. Um, you're giving it to those North Islanders. I think that's that's the idea, is it? Got to give it to everybody, eh? Yeah. <laughs> got to succeed. So everybody's got to have a go. And um, how are you feeling about the track and your car? And how's tonight feeling for you? In a good headspace? Is it like? Do you feel the number one position tonight? We'll see. All right, well, you... Yeah. Oh, good, the car's good, and I say, look, there is definitely some younger, faster guys than what we are, but we're happy to be where we are so far. Sweet, mate. Well, you're definitely um, showing the young guys how to do it as well, so don't write yourself off. Good luck for the rest of the night, and um, we look forward to seeing what you do. Cheers, I'm going to get some oxygen, we'll be good to go. <laughs> Steve Thompson, mate, you had a, you were up there for a bit there. Talk, talk us through that race. Yeah, we uh, had a um, P5 start, and um, battling for third with Bones, and uh, um, we got past him, and then it went yellow, and then... Um, and then I was battling with Brad and so on and then uh, we got past him and then going for the third again but my brakes sort of failing so I had to pump them before I went in so we're just trying to repair that now for the feature. Sweet, so what actually happened to the brakes here? What, did, what does pumping them do? Uh, well, just pump, pumping them up so then, because so, yeah. otherwise it was going straight to the floor and they weren't working. So I've obviously got a, a problem with the pistons or something called they're glazing up because the new pads, yeah. yeah so. mate. And you um, do you frequent Woodford Glen quite, quite often or you know this track pretty well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're not racing here, we're racing at home with yeah. the guys. So, um, yeah, we do. It's just it's like ice out there, you know. So, we're just going to try and make it work. Yeah, yeah mate. And um, what are you doing to your car to make um, prepare for the next race? Uh, we've got the setup guy, Rod Hurst. He's doing his thing, mate. He doesn't tell you too much. He's just going to oh, sort it out and I'll go stand on it. That'll be good. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, that sounds awesome. Good luck for the next race and um, hopefully we um, you do well again. Yeah, here's hoping. Thanks. Cheers. No worries, mate. Yeah. All right. How's about the three locals in that race taking the top spots? Dan ran first. Jacob Mitchell in second and Andrew Navin in third. That's a great result for the Southerners as they showed some brilliant racing skills. Well, they sure did. And Dan Ray leads on points going into the final, meaning he gets to choose what grid to start from. We will bring you the full feature final shortly, but for now, we have some highlights from the Garage 16 Wellington Modified Championships. Now, we weren't able to attend it, even though we were the naming rights sponsor for it, as it was put on the same night as the South Island Modified Champs so we weren't able to get as much coverage as we would have liked. 
However, Andrew Campbell, the resident videographer at Wellington, came to our rescue and provided us with some footage you're about to see.
huge congratulations to Jacko for taking out the championship and also to Ivana Coffey Modified, 17W Jonas England for taking second, as well as Jason Kalen for getting on the podium in third. It's always good to see some decent modified racing down the road. Now we mentioned that Hayden Mackay was competing in the South Island Championships in place of Jason Scott, but let's find out a little bit about Jason and his story. Yep, well, I'm Jason Scott, I live in Queenstown, down, down the deep south. Uh, my car is 88T and I run that number on my sprint cars and modified and, and all the cars that I run. Um, and my team's Edge Parts and, uh, and the part of that team's the boys here at Edge that, that have built this car and, and, it's, and it's a real good team. I started my speedway career, what it was, I raced jet boats for 20 years all around the world and, and one of my mates that raced with me, he said, nah, it's time to go on a sprint car. And back in those days there was no sprint cars, so I actually bought a, a saloon car off the Boltons and used that for six months and that was no good, so we bought a super saloon and uh, I was useless on that as well. And then my mate goes, nah, we're getting sprint cars. And, and, and back in those days there was none in the country hardly. So we bought them in from the States and, and uh, got them running at Cromwell and, and it's grown to a huge, huge grade down there nowadays. And then um, I had a go at Modifieds about six, seven years ago, struggled a, struggled a bit but enjoyed it. And then, you know, been back sprint car racing and, and the challenge come up and Andy's eaged me on to get in a Modified and, and, you know, we've developed a car to, to perform like a sprint car and, and that was our goal and, and we're back into the Modified to give it a crack. Oh, I've done plenty of laps here, but I, I definitely struggle with the track, you know, that, that three and four, I struggle hard, I like to keep the foot into it and, and I haven't got that finesse, you know, like, it, it frustrates me, Cromwell's an egg-shaped track that's a bit similar and I go fly around there real good, but here I just, I've just got to pull my head in and start using that low line, I think. So the sprint cars and the modifieds, they kind of look a little bit similar, but they're completely different cars. You're kind of coming back into the class, I guess it's just building and building and building, right? Yeah, like you'll get, this will feel like a sprint car, one lap out of ten sort of thing, but that's about it. But yeah, just totally different, you know, they look similar and, and a similar, similar concept, but they don't do the same things. Yeah, yeah so... So going back to uh, why we're doing this modified thing, we've, it's based on a sprint car from day one. So we tried this about five years ago and it didn't actually work. And we've re redone our chassis through Triple X and, and uh, scaled the cars, put a bit more time into them. And, and this week was there, we, we just run it yesterday and the day before we scaled it. So total different setup to what we probably had been doing or what I had been doing. And we've scaled it up and, and we got it weighed and, and measured up like a sprint car when we put it on the track yesterday it was just like a sprint car you know so and real wrapped about it so but today we're the proof in the pudding putting how it goes around Woodford Glen you know as I say I'll be right at one end it's done about the other. Right, so as, as I was saying earlier, this is based on a sprint car chassis. Dimensions 100% the same, different uh, steel combinations and that to, to make it comply with the grade. Um, but every component on this car is a sprint car, except for the tail tank, it's modified of course, and we've got a body. Uh, the mo we started this project in probably February, March, and, the, and it was developed around this engine here that, that Gavin and HPE and Kevin Band um, designed up, and we sat down and designed it, changed it halfway through, and, and, and it runs real sweet, and it's, it's about what they pr proposed to me, and, and that's, that's the main heart of this thing. Um, and it runs real smooth, and it's got a big rear range like a sprint car where the, my old modified motor didn't have any of that. Um, so we've got the Corvette body on it, a design feature course, we've got a door in our car. It used to, this used to be the main reason I hated modifieds, couldn't get in and out, so we've got a door, big cockpit, and uh, I can sneak in there and shut her up and I'm on my way. So, um, and as I say, it's, it's, tonight will be the proof in the pudding, and uh, we're there to market a, a, a grade, and like the modifieds are a strong grade from what I see at Woodford Glen and around the country and we're there to get behind it and, and if we can make this work it'll be cheaper racing in the future because the components are so cheap being sprint car components. 
Um, yes, yeah, so each part's in performance. I think we've been operating for about 12, 13 years now. It was a bit of a mistake, really. Like, as I say, we bought some sprint cars and, and there was a guy up in the North Island who had a whole lot of parts. We bought them all and then what, what, did, what could we do with them? And we uh, bought out a, a wee sprint car shop around the, co the road there, uh, was, which was Butler Automart in the day, and then big premises around the corner come up. And, you know, and it grew and it's been tough times over the years, a couple of different shareholders in it and things, but but um, Boothy and Andy have been with me just about from day one and uh, we've shifted premises a couple of years ago after the earthquakes and things and, and uh, we're getting real good support from everybody in all grades nowadays and it's, it's a real good little business. Yeah. Yeah, no, like if anybody wants to get into the sport, we're here, you know, whether they need a, a race helmet to a complete car, you know, like, you know, as promoted down at Cromwell, uh, one of the biggest things that I've, I've concentrated on down there is youth mini stock grade, and, and we had four, and now we've got 28. And, and that's that youth grade, and we watch it go through the grades, the six shooter grade, each parts were behind that to get that grade going, and, and I think there's 100 cars in New, in New Zealand, and, and all those grades are there to get through with experience and get into the end dream of a sprint car for a lot of people, and, and like this year alone, uh, we've got three new guys into sprint cars in Cromwell, all into brand new cars and never raced a car in their life, you know, and, and some of them guys are in their 50s and it's, and it's good to see, so. Um, and it's not just about being first, it's about, you know, Speedway's a massive family out there of enjoyment. I've got kids, they love it, and, and everywhere you go you meet somebody new and, and it's just a great sport to be in. Uh, that's the aim, yeah, we're definitely having a good crack at it, I'm getting on in age, so not many years left to try and get a title. I, I won two New Zealand titles in the jet boats and I've had a few cracks at, at the modifieds and sprint cars and it's, she's pretty hard to get your hands on those trophies. At the end of the day, you've got to study that format and keep your nose clean and get those points, depending on how the format is, and uh, get through to the end and, and you know, the, you got to, to win, you've got to finish. Now, local legend 24C Dan Ray decided to start the final of the South Island Modified Champs from Grid 2, meaning the Canterbury Champ and 3NZ Luke Brown started from Grid 1. And just behind them was the current New Zealand Champ, 1NZ Brad Lane. Let's watch now as they fight it out on the track to find out who is the latest South Island Modified Champion.
Luke Brown, 2020, 2021, no difference. You come down here and you're just winning everything, mate. What's the formula? What's happening? Um, I don't know. We're just getting everything right at the moment. Um, yeah, we just had a good run. Um, during the heats, not as not as good as I would have liked. Um, it's obviously still good. Managed to put it on the front row, but it uh, wasn't as tight as I would like to be. So uh, made a few good changes for that last feature. And uh, yeah, Dan slipped ahead there. Um, he was running really well and slowly reeled him in and then uh, found a line that worked for me. And uh, I mean, I've only just come in, so I'm not too sure how it all went behind me, but the car was fast, felt good, um, got through lap traffic good, so you just got to get it right on the night. Um, you know, there's some big boys out there like uh, Hayden Mackay and um, old Gary Lennon and Steve Thompson that unfortunately crashed out, and, you know, they're, they're serious contenders, so, um, you know, they, I imagine they would have been right there, but, yeah, just we just got it all together on the night, and, yeah, the, the good run continues. Yeah, absolutely, it most certainly does, and um, so next on the agenda for you, you're off to, uh, you're off to hunt. Then we've got the North Island, Garrett 16 North Island Modified Champs up in, uh, up in Wellington and then, uh, then we've got the big one back down here in uh, February 19th and 20th. So um, you're just going to keep working hard on that, um, keep working hard on the car and the systems, bring it back down here and try and do a three-peat down south for the season. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, we're back to uh, yeah, Huntley next week to try to defend our Waikato Champs. So um, always like racing at Huntley. It's pretty cool. And then, yeah, back for the Dirt Cup, which um, another 30 lapper, which will be cool. I haven't actually run at our home track yet, which is funnily enough, been on here twice, haven't even raced at home. And then, uh, yeah, back to Wellington for the Garage 16 North Island Champs, which would be bloody awesome. Uh, last time I was in Wellington, we were fortunate enough to win, so um, hopefully we can string together some good form there. But, um, yeah, it's all building for the New Zealands, eh? Like, all, all the boys here are in the same boat. Um, we're all kind of chipping away and improving, and um, just at the moment, we're just getting stuff right. Like, there's a lot of quick cars here. Everyone's running good gear. Um, it's just getting the whole package together on the night, and whatever we're doing seems to be working, so, yeah. All right, man, that's all good. So that's absolutely brilliant. So the pellet supplies, 3NZ, looking to make his way. Try to get that 1NZ back, mate. So all the best for the next few weeks. Congratulations on tonight, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. No, thanks, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and just a big thanks to all my sponsors. You know, I couldn't do it without them. Uh, Pallet Supplies, Dodd Civil Consultants, Garage 16, uh, Chillex Group, uh, Penrose Motors, Track Sport Engines, PG Hydraulics. Um, they all play a big role, and uh, Smith Racing as well. Without these guys, you know, I can't do it. So full credit to them and full credit to Garage 16 for sponsoring the meeting. Yeah, and how's about these awesome people behind you? How about a bit of a shout out for those that help you put that car on the track, mate? Honestly, mate, um, you know, we're not the biggest of teams, but we all have a role and, uh, you know, from Dad uh, doing the maintenance and engine work, uh, myself doing the setup, Tash doing everything in between, Mark doing his tyre pressures and stuff, everyone's got a role um, and we just work really well and, yeah, we're, we're just loving racing at the moment, it's all going well and, uh, yeah, hey, we'll take it. Loving it when you're winning it. All the best. Thank you very much, Luke. Cheers. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Okay, so the 24C, suck it up, modified, Dan Ray, second place tonight, mate. Hey, are you happy with your result? Yeah, no, it was good. We were chugging along pretty good, eh? So, first South Island car home, so, technically. Yeah. <laughs> building, 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 mate. you got to get these C cars up, up, up the front for these. Uh, got a couple, got one more event before the uh, for the New Zealand's here. The car's performing pretty well. You're performing really well. So um, so in that race, I noticed it was kind of, you had Luke kind of behind you, and then it was a case of which direction to go with the 46 GM. And um, yeah, one of those things, right? Yeah, lap traffic, eh? That's, you got to read it, and he read it better than I did. So that's, um, yeah, that was... That was it, wasn't it? So. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Well, yeah, but hey, look, man, I'm sure you and your team have uh, you worked really hard, got the car got the car going well. Like I said, you're going well. So, yeah, all the best for the rest of the season, mate. Cool. Cheers, buddy. Thanks. Cheers. OK, 48 GM. First time I've talked to a time of this season. Um, obviously not in the best circumstances, mate. Up and over there, what happened? I uh, just got tangled up with Brad Lane going down the back straight there, turn two, just um, hooked underneath him and spun around backwards on the track, going backwards, and, yeah, everyone else collected me along the way. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit of a little bit of carnage, but you're okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. Yep. Yeah, yeah. About a little bit of rebuild to go on the car, mate. Oh, new chassis, pretty much, mate. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty serious. Oh, yeah. that, that's that's no good. So, um, so yeah, back to back to the drawing board. You think you'll um, you'll think you'll get it back on the track this season? Uh, oh well, who knows at this stage? Yeah, yeah. if a chassis pops up, yeah. Yep. Got to got to get home, get have a look at it, and go from there. So, um, so yeah, mate. Sorry to be talking to you on these circumstances, and um, and yeah, we'll uh, hopefully get to see you guys back this season, and um, maybe for the New Zealand champs. So all the best. Yep. Thank you, mate. Brad Lane, one NZ, third place tonight. Well done. How did it feel? 
yeah, the car was feeling good, obviously. Um, we were lucky to get third there at the end with um, Michael having a, uh, a lapper in front of him and getting a little bit tied up, but all in all, we're all happy. So, mate, so we've got um, North Island champs coming up soon and the New Zealand modified champs, and so you came third today. So you look like you're on form. What are you, what are you thinking from about the Woodford Glen track for those New Zealand champs? Well, yeah, we always love coming down here, obviously, a good bunch of guys and stuff, and um, the track's really racy obviously it showed you know um, people running top on the bottom and and um, real close to each other and, and that's what makes it enjoyable and puts on a show for the crowd and I noticed um, I noticed you managed to avoid that it crashed there it, was, it looks like it was fairly bad it I spent a bit of time cleaning that up and um, but I noticed you were going around um, seeing if everyone was okay what what happened there yeah, so uh, me and Atama we were running pretty hard for um, a few laps there and, and we sort of come together off turn two and, and his left front sort of got with my right rear and I went way up in there with us hanging out and, and then unfortunately he went backwards and, and a few other cars had nowhere to go. So just running around making sure everybody's all good, you know, all mates here and making sure they didn't need a hand and stuff. No, I think they appreciate it too. So um, you couldn't obviously run this um, this car without your crew and your sponsors. Who's, who's the important ones to you, mate? Yeah, obviously um, Pops for helping out. Um, you know, uh, Nick, Annie Claire, my mum, um, my sister, and uh, my partner Jazz and daughter Chevelle, um, and obviously sponsors, um, professional door services, Andy and Jane, um, Machinery House, Garage 16, uh, Vasey Engineering, Raceworks, um, Tim Clark from Clark Performance, and uh, Ryobi Door Closers, um, and also Bally and Mitzi, uh, Scotty Rumble. Cheers, guys. Fair, mate. Congratulations on the third tonight. Have a have a few drinks. Uh, no, don't have a few drinks because that's irresponsible. Um, but it, <laughs> let's say that again. <laughs> this is the worst thing All right. Congratulations, mate. Oh. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's one in Z. Well, that was one heck of a feature final. Luke Brown has done it again. He's come down south and won. Absolutely awesome racing. Congratulations to Dan Ray in second place and then also to the 1NZ Brad Lane taking third. Yeah, absolutely awesome racing. It was great to see. A perfectly run event, as always, by Steve and the team at Coken Woodford Glen. Thanks very much for having us. It was a pleasure as always. The next event on our calendar is the Garage 16 North Island Modified Champs at the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway on the 30th of January. We've got an incredible field of talent lined up for this one, so make sure you either get your tickets now or keep an eye out after the event for our coverage. And after that comes the ultimate prize for the Modified class, the Garage 16 New Zealand Championships. Now this is going to be held at Coke and Woodford Glen on the 19th and 20th of February and is shaping up to be one of the largest fields ever. Yeah, so get to the Woodford Glen website now where you can buy your tickets so you don't miss out as it's going to be packed. We will also bring you extensive coverage after the event including all the drama that unfolds behind the scenes. So visit us on facebook.com slash 16 media and follow us there and head over to youtube.com slash 16 media and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our great content. Also check us out on Instagram by searching at 16 media for even more Speedway content. Okay that brings us to the end of the show for now. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.